lost in the sauce. <laughs> in today's session, you are going to know exactly how to present even the most complicated information without losing your audience. Think about this. What do you do when you are requested to speak on a topic on which you're seriously passionate and knowledgeable, but it is a topic that is obscure or one that has received little attention from your audience? You may fear you will run the risk of talking over your audience's heads. And then what good is that? What have you accomplished? Then you look to the other extreme and you decide you could simplify the topic. However, at the same time, you don't want to talk down to your audience, creating an overly elementary set of points and subsequently creating for yourself and your audience, possibly your audience, something of a boring experience. You don't want to do that. It's actually a conundrum in which you find your, your, yourself. That is one thing that is for sure. However, take heart in the fact that you can still discuss topics that can be foreign to others or complicated and do it in a way that is engaging and uh, insightful for everyone involved. Actually, that is the beauty and a fundamental purpose of public speaking. That's a really exciting thing to educate others. This just means you have to find ways to approach a topic or connect the topic or concept in a way that it's familiar to the audience. So I'm going to pause and say that again. What you want to do is connect that somewhat foreign topic to a concept that is in a way already familiar to the audience. And you do this by focusing on three specific question stems. You use these in your presentations about the material that might be new to your audience. And those question stems are as follows. And I want you to take note of this. Those three question stems are what, how, and why. If you answer those three questions, then it makes it very easy for the audience to follow you no matter what the topic may be. For example, you might ask, what is it? And you're not just asking your audience what is it, but you're making sure you answer that question for your audience and then give them questions that have the what question stem. The second one, how does one start to understand it? Again, these are questions to ask and answer yourself during the preparation phase. And then finally, number three, why is it important and why should others care? Now that last one is kind of a tough question that why should others care? It, it can hurt your feelings because you're thinking to yourself, Bridget, I, I, I don't want to think about that. Why should others care? They should care because I care. I'm sorry. It's not that easy. People are not automatically passionate about that which you are passionate. What I want you to do is to work to connect the unknown or the unfamiliar to what is known or what is familiar to the audience. And that makes it easier for the audience to start to make connections itself. Think about what is familiar to the audience, how is this relatable to something that the audience already knows, and make those connections. Additionally, I want you to refrain from asking the audience, do you know what I mean? and you're really thinking that you're checking for understanding. Sometimes it's used as a filler phrase, that's fine to a certain extent, but what I want you to do instead is ask a more meaningful question. Ask a more meaningful question if you really want to check comprehension. You see, when you ask that question, do you know what I mean? If there is indeed someone in the audience who does not know what you mean, I'm going to tell you it is highly unlikely he is going to speak up or she is going to speak up because there can be embarrassment, a feeling that he is the only one who doesn't know what you mean. And the question has the hidden suggestion that the audience should know what you mean. So no one really wants to respond to that one. Instead, I want you to share a chunk of information, then have the audience answer a meaningful question. Maybe you could answer or ask them things like, what caught your attention? What surprised you about this? Maybe have them think about in what ways would you apply this? What would you do differently? What would you add to what I shared? And so when you do that, 
when you ask those kinds of questions and you have the audience thinking about what the material means for them, then you have them really applying it to their lives and then wanting more. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bridget McGowan with BMAC Talks. Be seen, be heard, be great.